we encourage the organizations that we work with to be transparent uh, with the data that they're collecting, uh, not collect more data than they need, but also certainly collect the data that you need to run a good program, uh, but just be transparent uh, about what you're doing with that data and give people clear opt-ins and, and opt-outs uh, from that program. This is Velocitize Talks, and I'm Andy North. My guest today is Mike Conlow, Head of Technology Consulting for Blue State Digital. Mike, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's jump right into it. Uh, tell us a little bit about Blue State Digital. This is a very busy time of year for you. Uh, Blue State Digital is a full-service consulting firm, and so we have our roots in politics, but we really do a little bit of everything. We do branding, we do UX and design, and a lot of technology work, which is, which is what I do. And uh, our background is in politics. A lot of the leadership in the company came from political, political campaigns like myself. Um, and I was on the 2008 Obama campaign and on the Obama re-election campaign in 2012 where I was the deputy CTO. Fantastic. What is your specific role at Blue State Digital? I lead our technology consulting practice. And what that means is helping clients put together the right bits of technology and integrate them together into a kind of a working system. Um, our sweet spot is kind of in the nonprofit world, but we also do plenty of brand work uh, as well. With the recent data breaches and, and manipulation of fake news out there, do you feel like the public is losing trust in social media and, and some of the tried and true technology avenues that they have traditionally gone to and looked for? Yeah, I, I do. I feel like the most sensational news and using quotes there on purpose is really getting the most traction now. There's, really, there's an incentive to come up with the most outrageous and outlandish piece of content because that's what will get uh, you know, viral free shares and likes on Facebook and that's what Facebook is prioritizing. So I think there's a couple of things that need to happen. One is that Facebook needs to do a better job of encouraging people to engage with content that isn't uh, out, outrageous and promote people who, who put forward really high quality content. There's uh, onus on the organizations and the brands and the nonprofits that are putting the content out there to do the same thing, to do their side of the bargain, which is put out high quality content that isn't trying to appeal to the lowest common denominator and, and generate um, uh, outrageous clicks and clickbait. And there's another piece of this too, which is I think you just saw uh, in Europe, the, the GDPR regulations go into effect. And that, is, that has had a, a, a good impact, I think. It's kind of a common sense privacy framework. It's not very strict uh, regulations on exactly how you want to do things, but it, it, gives, it gives people a sense of trust in how their data is being used. It's clear opt-ins. Um, here's what we're going to use cookies for on our website. You have the right to delete yourself off of a system. And, and I think we could find a way to incorporate something like that. Not that exactly, but something like that in the U.S. That, that starts to build back trust that you're not handing over data to these platforms and you have no idea what's going to happen to it. With your clients that you're working with, are they seeking data as a constant way of reinforcing some of the, the campaigns and so forth that they are working on? All of our clients, they, they, need, they need their customers some amount of their customers data to run their programs effectively to message people with re relevant messages to segment and personalize messages uh, but there's a there's a thoughtful process that an organization can go through to think about what is the data that I need and not collect more data than that and also to add on top of that just the same kind of common sense measures that are in GDPR about clear opt-ins and about clear unsubscribes from from email lists are there any types of new technologies coming down the line, uh, artificial intelligence for instance, that you see sort of weaving their way into some of the work that you're doing? Yeah, I, I think a big one is voice, the Alexa and Google Home um, and the, the voice assistants that we're all going to be carrying around. And if you think about websites, they're still, I think if we're honest about it, they're still a little bit of a brochure. And, and they're all kind of organized the same way, and you can kind of find where you're going. But pretty soon here, I think we're going to get to the point where I can ask the voice assistant a question and get back an answer in most cases. I don't actually think that we're there yet. I think if you are honest with the Google Home or the Alexa, 
it's, it's somewhat of a narrow set of questions that you can ask it and get back the right answer. But um, that's going to change really quickly. And, and things like what, if you want to know about Andy North at, at Velocitize, you'll be able to ask Google Home that and get back an answer off of off of the web. And so I think we're getting there very quickly. And that has the that's going to change the way we think about. It won't just be a brochure website that you're building. You're going to be building your your information architecture in a way that's going to support all of these other apps like like the Google Home and and the Alexa um, and including the website uh, and, and other tools as well. With so many technologies, at last count over 6,800 uh, in the MarTech stack, what types of technologies do you see coming into play? Uh, and what are some of the hot marketing techs that, that you're working with now and, and working with in the future? The marketing tech stack has gotten, in some sense, complicated. Like you say, there's a lot of players in it. But I think the organizations that are going to be successful are the ones that can bring together a really powerful marketing platform that has the right number of tools in it. And so uh, just a few years ago, it was relatively hard to make your own website. The, the website process was hard. The hosting process was hard. Now with companies like WP Engine, hosting your WordPress website is not the hardest part of the challenge. The hardest part is integrating all these tools together into a functional system. And so what, where we're seeing the most success is an organization that has a thoughtful website um, obviously good hosting behind it, but also pairs that with an outbound email tool that's really powerful. J a journey orchestration tool that can tie together the journey of signing up, getting a thank you email, and then putting you on a, a thoughtful communication path from, from then on. Personalizing the website so that when you come back to it, it's not just that brochure site that we talked about, but it is, it is um, it recognizes who you are and what you're interested in and personalizes the experience uh, to you. And then also stores all that data in a database of record where you can make insights about the person based on both their web traffic and their conversion data. And it pulls all the, those things together into an integrated platform that for, for an organization to do outbound marketing. And, and that's, that's the key, is bringing together those five or six tools in a really tight integration uh, and that's, that's the power that we see in the marketing tech stack. That is seamless to the end user, I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely seamless to the end user. And, and also, really importantly, it, it's, it's not uh, taxing, it's not trying for the organization to maintain and set up. Um, maybe you need a tech person or two, but for the marketer on the team, they, they don't think that they are using a complicated tech platform. It's fascinating. Uh, we talked a little bit about trust. You worked for Michael Bloomberg's gun control nonprofit. Uh, are you seeing more brands taking a stand on issues such as Patagonia and, and Dick's Sporting Goods? I'm really encouraged by the way that that is going. Uh, I, I, I've seen the, the news like everyone else that, that Nike has had such a great increase in sales after the Colin Kaepernick um, uh, ad. and. And I think a lot of people were wondering after that ad came out, like, is Nike smart about this? What, what are they trying to do um, with this ad? And uh, there's been s some stuff written about it since then that it was a very thoughtful process, and they were thinking about their youth market and the fact that their youth market is soon going to be their adult market. And that demographic really wants the companies that they support to take a stand on issues. Um, and so I, I think we saw that very clearly uh, with Nike. I think we see it all the time with, with Patagonia is another one who, who takes uh, a strong stand. Um, Starbucks recently uh, with, with their kind of community, opening up to the community uh, more. And so, so I think that th this is a trend that we'll absolutely see continue. Given that the U.S. is a leader in internet technology uh, and in, in some ways has developed it since its beginning, why are we then lagging behind with some of the online election processes and technology? Do you foresee a time when we're actually voting online? I, I hope so at, at some point and that it is done uh, safely and, and securely. We have some, uh, some basics that we should get out of the way first, which is w we make it hard to vote in general. Here in New York, um, the absentee voting process is, is very hard. We don't have uh, in-person uh, absentee or early voting that most states now have. People are voting all across the country right now in the midterms, uh, but, but not in New York and some other states that, 
it, make it hard uh, to, to vote early. And so we have some basics to get out of the way, but I hope that after um, that, that is done that we can get to the point where we can safely and securely uh, vote online. You talked about personalization, and that seems to be sort of the, the new frontier mm -hmm. for, for marketing. Uh, it's been said that there can, instead of now being one website for one million users, there may be a million websites for those all different users, uh, everyone being personalized to the individual user. What do you see uh, happening with personalization? Yeah, I think we are, we're fairly good about taking in a piece of data when you put in your email address into a form. When you make a purchase or you sign up for a newsletter, we can then follow up with you and send you that newsletter or, or tailor future, future content to your previous purchases. What we're not terribly good at doing is thinking about all the other ways in which you're expressing your interests and tailoring the communication stream and the website personalization based on that data. So what you've clicked on around the website and then tailoring the experience in your future visits to, to that specific area or even which emails you open and then future emails focusing on that, that area. And so I think that there's a lot to be done to, to increase the quality of the experience based on the, the interest that you've shown, that you've given to the organization for the future. Is the data enabling that sort of personalization, that wave of customizing intake? Yeah, uh, yeah ab absolutely. Uh, and so even just your clicks on, on the website, if you go to a nonprofit's website and you're clicking around on certain issue pages, we should be tracking that you have an interest in those issues and the follow-up communication can be tailored to, to just those specific issues. And that's the kind of data that is often now kind of lost into the ether. It's only when you uh, put your email address into a form and press submit that we think of you as kind of a real person or a real conversion. And there's a lot, there's a lot of other stuff happening that we can uh, capture and put into your profile than just that, that email conversion form. Our guest today has been Mike Conlow with Blue State Digital. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great conversation. Thank you.